World Cup. Say OJ one yellow card. The fine is ten thousand dollars. One yellow card. Yeah, gee, yes, yes. One yellow card, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. You have eight yellow cards in the competition. You what it means is that eighty thousand dollars. Eighty thousand dollars. Yes, a car, a boy. You know, from from bookings alone, mm. luckily you play a be a red card. Yeah. Red card is about fifteen thousand or so dollars per card. See if all this kind of man, you are quite open for quite a few years. I was born in ready, so I'm always ready. Make my boy blasters. Don't want to make my boy pepe pepe. I watch him be more crap. Why not make my boy change? Hey, a Casio Poli, we a Ganio Poli, Ganio Poli, na si no. Ya da ya ho na ya ba se siya. Um, I'm member back na yenche and semno ase. Oh, you you are you are looking a bit dreamy, but I guess it, it comes it comes with the territory, it comes yeah. with the with the position and everything that that surrounds this. Yeah. But how have you been spending your your holiday season? Or well, you haven't been holidaying at all? Work, 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 work. Especially when Afcon is in a few days. Yes. You know, um, we had a marathon meeting yesterday, trying to put things in place, arrival of players, um, arrangement of um, other logistics. Um, um, team, the first first batch of the team moving to Kumasi. What we have to do early next week, um, in order to start our campaign on a on a good note. So it's been it's been tireless, but we we'll, we we'll soldier on. Soldiering <laughs> on, Henry. But Henry, since you mentioned it on the camping, we were informed earlier that the camping was supposed to take place in Johannesburg, South Africa. But we were informed of the switch to Kumasi, and like you said, you've made preparations towards that. But what what exactly influenced the change? Well. Um, I, I think I think that first of all, um, we 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 sat down as an association um, and met the technical team of the of the Black Stars to decide on where to come. Um, initially, when we we decided on when we began the process, mm -hmm. a few options came okay. up. Um, the first option was to come to camp in Ghana. Uh, once we that that option came up, the coaches gave reasons why it would be extremely difficult to camp in Ghana because over the period they've always had challenges but we find a way to manage it and then because they are one-off games you know if you have a one-off game it's quite different from camping for a very long period of long time period. ahead of a competition yes. the scenarios are different you need um, the right atmosphere you need the right uh, you know um, 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 serene environment um, the players you need minimal or no distraction at all you know because you are focusing on a battle ahead and it's not just one match it's a number of games in the group stage and then depending on how how well you do you make the next round which influences so, the decision of playing behind closed doors absolutely source. absolutely so um eventually ghana um togo um equatorial guinea cameroon benin were all uh, various options that we looked at but um, the technical team for South Africa was uh, the most appropriate um, at the time. Then, um, three days ago, the ministry called for an emergency meeting um, with the FA and the technical team. And, and the, the technical team gave the ministry reasons why it would be extremely difficult to camp in Ghana. Today, as we speak through um, um, the, the ministry, they have assured us that um, whatever we need to make the campaign in commerce a, a success would be provided here i'm talking about i'm um, trying as much as possible to make sure we don't meet um, the crowd anytime we arrive at the babaya stadium because the coaches want to train behind closed doors across the period um, and also the hotel of the team we need adequate security as much as possible sometimes you wake up in the morning you get to the lobby of the of the hotel and it's full you know yeah, there are fans uh, waiting yes, this fans, media um, friends um, parents relatives they are all coming there for one reason or the other and and we are in christmas so you know the demand is high <laughs> very high so 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 we've 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 looked at all these things and eventually um the decision was that we we shift focus from johannesburg to Kumasi. Um, as we speak the advanced team have arrived in Kumasi to put things in place um, some of the players um, who are who are off competition. I mean, the leagues that are on break, most of them have already arrived. Um, those who were playing in the English league, uh, we are expecting them to arrive hopefully 
um, tomorrow, Monday, um, so that we shall begin camp on, on, on Tuesday. Now, let me also mention that um, um, as part of um, you know, plans to, to build up to the, to the tournament, um, we are expecting Chris Hilton in town today uh, or this evening. And um, plans are that hopefully next week, early next week, he will uh, meet the press, uh, review his, his final squad, and then also speak to issues that have come up in the last uh, couple of weeks, the last week, and the last uh, few days. Um, I think it also helps shape the narrative in terms of his readiness for the tournament, what has been his challenges, if, if indeed he needs anything in terms of support, um, availability of equipment and what have you, um, so that we'll be in the right frame of mind once we move into preparation move, there wouldn't be, you know, distractions and, and all that. So um, we're hoping to do that hopefully early next week and then after which we will announce the, the possible opponent or the next opponent once Botswana is off the radar. Definitely. I was just coming to that point because we were informed again that it was Botswana that the Black Stars were going to face. But, of course, that was influenced by where you were going to be camping initially. So now that we're going to be camping in Kumase, are we looking at some governing countries? Well, um, one of the reasons why we eventually decided to camp in, in, um, in, in South Africa was because of the Botswana friendly, like you mentioned. Um, initially, we, we thought of camping in Togo because we had begun discussions with Algeria because we knew the Algerians were coming to Togo. Yeah. Um, a few issues came up, so we couldn't finalize that particular deal. So um, that was off or it fell through. Then um, Equatorial Guinea was another option. They agreed to play us, but the technical team um, said they were not you know, convinced about the facilities in Equatorial Guinea, so that friendly was also called off. And then we had to confirm the Botswana one and once um, the South Africa you know, schedule was, was confirmed. Today, as we speak, we have spoken to, luckily enough, Anila, um, <laughs> luckily enough, Namibia um, are in Ghana. Exactly. So um, as soon as we heard from them, you know, some of these things, you can never do it without contacting the Football Association in that country. So they spoke to us, they were coming to Ghana, we made all the arrangements for them, we put everything in place, I, th I think their, their conditions are okay now. Um, initially they said they would play against um, two club sites and then play one high profile friendly match. But um, once we decided to cancel the trip to South Africa, we engaged Namibia and they have agreed to play us. So we will, we will play Namibia on um, January 8th. Okay. At the Babaya Sports Stadium, and that will be the only friendly match that the team will will play before we end playing to Cote d'Ivoire. Definitely, but looking at how things stand on the table right now, Henry, are you worried about the time that it takes to reveal the squad for the Black Stars? Because you know, day in day out, when a lot of competitions are coming up, there's a lot of conversation that surrounds it. On social media, there are a lot of people who have negative comments. There are a lot of people who feel like there's a lot of influence when it comes in the first place. But what do you think exactly the reception would be like for the squad? Well, these, percep these perceptions would, would always exist. Um, I'm one person who is least bothered about some of these things that people post because it's a process. If they knew the processes that we go through in naming a squad, sometimes, Anila, sometimes two days to official announcement of a squad, a player goes into competition and gets hit. So you can imagine what happened if you had named the squad earlier. Now, we, we have been waiting because we still had players who were in competition or who had games to play. Over the, um, over the week, Jordan was in action. You pray he doesn't get hurt because he's one of your key players. Then on Thursday, Kudus played against Arsenal. You pray uh, you play he doesn't get hurt because, again, he is one of your most influential players. Now, you cannot name a squad when these things are lingering on your mind. As we speak today, Alexander Jiku has a game in Saudi Arabia. It's a Turkish Cup game. They have moved the game from Turkey to Saudi Arabia. And again, you have to uh, pray he doesn't get injured. So all these things go into, you know, um, the plans, the, the, 
the projections you make in finally announcing a squad. Luckily for us, some of the leagues are on break, so the players have come home. And um, it is our hope and prayer that none of them came back home with any knock, any injury for us to you know, um, be worried about. Um, again, one funny thing, depending on the mood of a player, he can pick up a phone and call the head coach on any day and say, I'm sorry, I'm not coming. Want to play. Or, okay, I have a family problem, so I do not think I am in the right frame of mind to join the team. And these things happen regularly. The only thing is that these coaches come up, they come out with their, with their, with their explanations without necessarily touching on some of these nitty gritties. But they happen almost every time before we make squad, squad, uh, squads um, public. So, um, like I mentioned, at least we've provided the 55-man provisional squad to CAF. We have until January 3 to name the final squad. Um, we have issues with Thomas. We have issues with Tariq. Um, and and um, we, we are hoping, we are speaking to us now, we want to see if indeed it will be prudent because of history because of Ilyasu in 208, because of Richmond Boachi Adam, Antonianan in 2013, and the recent one, Wakasu in 2020, 2022. So we want to try as much as possible and name a squad that is injury-free, that has no situations regarding injuries, and then you go into a tournament thinking, oh, you will get better after your first two matches, or you'll get better after your first one. That will definitely affect the team. Absolutely, it, it affects the team greatly. Kudus couldn't make it the last time because we were hoping Ajax would allow him to come. He never came. And I'm sure it is one of the reasons why um, you know, our play pattern was, was, was so poor in the, in the last competition. So I just want people to calm down. Chris is arriving tonight. When he arrives, he will meet management. who will iron out all the fine details. And then early next week, before we start camping, he will make the squad public and he will speak to the media. Definitely. Thank you, Henry. We are ironing now. Let's get into the performance of the Black Stars. A lot of people have been watching the Black Stars. We've looked at some of the friendly have games. I, the I've, been, I've been watching the Black Stars, but a lot of people, we're talking to the Ghanaian fans <laughs> out there, Henry. I have been watching them. A lot of people have been watching them. <laughs> I, think, I think you are one of them. <laughs> you are also I'm a, a fan. Keeper, a huge fan. Yes, yes. A yes. huge fan. I, yeah. I, I, could, I could never stop supporting yeah. the, the Black Stars. Yes. <laughs> but, Henry, we have all been watching the Black Stars. We've watched some of the international friendlies. We've also looked at some of the qualifications for the World Cups, those qualifiers. And we, we have seen... A team that can play together as a unit but we've also been able to identify just a few issues and should we carry some of these into the Africa Cup of Nations it's likely that we may end up getting punished no matter how hopeful we decide to be looking at some of the games that we've played we played USA mm. we played Mexico we mm. played Liberia we played mm. Madagascar we played Comoros Central Africa exactly Republic. some of those ended up in losses some of those ended up in wins but with a goal-scoring ability, it's a little touchy. How would you assess the performance of the Black Stars throughout this game and what exactly could change in the Africa Cup of Nations? One thing, I think we've, we've considered very poor goals. Um, you need to say it as it is, without mincing words. Because, I mean, once the game is on TV and everybody is watching, you cannot have a different narration from what is happening on the field of play. So, yes, we've, we've, con we've considered very, very poor goals, cheap goals. Um, out of which some have come by way of penalties, um, some have come by way of set pieces, and um, some ca ha have also come by way of poor goalkeeping. You know, and I am sure that um, <coughs> these are things that the technical team is very much aware, uh, aware of. Yesterday we met them <coughs> and the head coach admitted that some of the goals we have considered um, have been poor. And, and he would work around the clock to rectify the situation before we go to the AFCON. Um, it is also a fact that we've, we've had one or two games where our key players were missing, you know. Um, for instance, a player like Salisu Mohammed hasn't played a single game for us since we came back from the World Cup over a year ago, you know. Um, it is also a fact that um, we've been very, very inconsistent with collapse. Sometimes two days to a game, your key players are not coming and you need to find replacements. And it's also affected the spine of the team. Um, how many games has Thomas played since we came back from the AFCON? I think about three. Just about. You know, so, so it's, it's not been too good um, in terms of you know, consistency of, of 
player representation and then also consistency of performance for which reason the fans are agitated and some of them don't even believe that we've got what it takes to excel you know at the upcoming competition but I'm excited to say that today um, Salisu is back at least he's played um, three matches in the last few weeks um, before the French League 1 went on break Amante is back he's played um, two games before the Turkish League went on break um, Jiku, who has been in and out of the team, is also back. At least he's been regular for his club, Fenerbahce, in, in recent times. And he has a game today. We, uh, we, we hope that he plays that game as well to, uh, in order to get more numbers you know, or more minutes to, to his game time. So, yes, um, in midfield, today it is Salis versus um, Edmond Addo. The next day is Salis versus... Um, Elisha Ousu. The following day, we have Antoine Semenyo playing up front. It is Inyaki out wide. So, you see, um, a number of factors you know, have attributed to our inconsistencies in recent years. But this time, one is going to have a long period of time to assess his team. It's rather unfortunate he wants to play only one game, but I would have thought he, he gets more games. But he says he's not too sure about injury situations. So, and he, he also does not want to add to the burden, you know. Um, of the team so he wants to play only one game but it will help him to he will use some of the previous games to also assess individual players as we build up to the to the competition so anila yes the truth is we've considered some poor goals we've considered cheap goals we've not been consistent and the fans are not happy in fact um i am not happy either um, because when the team as performs, a fan or in your position maybe both <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know um, my my work is such that once the team is performing I have less job to do but once the team is not performing you go explain tire I go explain tire sometimes you go explain way that people go talk say you cry you know all you they think all you they talk be non fat you know but 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 on a serious note I think we've not been good enough um, and we are all concerned uh, we 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 wish we have all our materials um, available to us to be able to go into the into the tournament with our full arsenal, which would give us the impetus to be competitive, courageous, and and that would help us wrap shoulders with the best. Give off our best, uh, Henry. It's funny you would mention give off our full arsenal because under the current climate and our <laughs> previous. Game. I do not think we want to be using that word too keenly. But before we take another breather here on the show, Henry, I've just been wondering what you make of the group. We are in Group B. We are going to be facing the likes of Egypt, Mozambique, Cape Verde. Cape Verde is our first challenge. Do you think this is going to be a dicey situation? Do you think the Black Stars can see themselves through? Or you think that, like the way every game goes, it could be unpredictable? Well, on the evidence of what, what happened two years ago, you cannot rule out any team and, and show disrespect towards any team. The African game has come of age. Um, we, we are in a situation where every team is strong enough because sometimes the, the players may not be known, but collectively they are a strong unit. Um, we've played Kved a number of times in recent years and they are very, very strong. They've got, every, they, they've got a very competent technical team as well at the helm of affairs. Um, that aside, Egypt, strong force. They may not have um, top, top, top names, you know, as compared to Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and what have you, with only Mohamed Salah and maybe Mohamed Some may El argue Nene. that that name alone. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe Mohamed El Nene, even though he's not getting... Uh, regular playing know, time yeah, regular at, playing at all. Time we only see him on the bench when the, the camera seems to yes. be going around. And the last time against Liverpool, after the game, he was talking to Salah. Maybe but, but, but... Um, Egypt is Egypt. They've got a very strong league. In fact, in the last 208 when they won the, the, the Cup of Nations in Ghana, it was, it was a combination of foreign and home-based players. players yeah. Indeed, Ahmed Fathi and co. Um, Ramadan, Sobi and all those players. And in 2010 again when they beat us, it was a Hassan Shihata team he, has, he had kept together for a long time, from 206 to 8, 2010. Which is the consistency that you speak Absolutely. of. Absolutely. And, and they went off because of their political issues, yes. they came back and got to the final. Even stronger. And, and, and so you cannot, you cannot say Egypt is not a strong side because of history, because of records. And then Mozambique. Mozambique. You need to be wary of, of Mozambique. So it's, it's a tricky group. Um, we will play Kivet in the first game. I think we need to win um, to calm nerves and then go into the second game against Egypt, fight as well 
and, and finish off against Mozambique. Like the dreams, motto goes, we need to still believe in the Black Stars. And I believe that if we should defeat Cape Verde, that may just be the first step towards doing that. We we'll take the station has been surrounding the Black Stars. We're going to be playing a friendly with Namibia. They are currently camping here in Ghana. We've also looked at the group that the Black Stars will be featuring in, and that is going to be alongside Cape Verde, Mozambique, and Egypt. We've taken a look at the performance of the Black Stars throughout the friendlies and the World Cup qualification. But now we're shifting the focus to setting players. Let's take a look at Iñaki Williams. Henry, Iñaki is a man that has come under a lot of criticism because people felt that he was not scoring the goals which was supposed to be his main aim as a center forward within the team. We have seen Iñaki play on the wings where he seems more comfortable. We have seen him play up top where it seems there has been a little bit of a tricky situation there. But he did score against Madagascar and I think that led a lot of fans to be screaming out his name, feeling a lot more comfort that Iñaki Williams can score because they've seen him play for his club. And then they've seen him play for the Black Stars. And like the same situation with party, people feel as though they play differently for club and national team. But with Iñaki Williams, how well do you think that Madagascar goal boosted his confidence? Well, he's, <clears throat> he's undoubtedly one of the most committed players in the team. Um, Iñaki is first to arrive. Um, Iñaki is first to get to the team bars. Uh, and he's always very focused, very, very focused. His unfortunate things have not been positive since he, he, he pulled on the shirt of the Black Stars from last, last year's um, World Cup in Qatar. But, but he's never given up. And, that's, and that is the spirit, I, that is one thing I like about him. He has a spirit of never give up. He always <coughs> tells his, his teammates that he would, he would continue to fight until he gets his first goal. Um, I remember interviewing him when, when we were about to play against the USA and he said he would score. Unfortunately, he couldn't, he couldn't score. score. So, <coughs> yes, um, at his club side, he plays in a different role. Um, the coach has explained time, um, time and time again that maybe they, they, he grew up from the academy, he spent all his time in the club, they know all his attributes, they know how to make him function. And, and so it, it will be almost um, unfair to compare what happens at Atletico to what happens in the Black, Black Stars, Stars because we don't play the same kind of football. Um, the scenarios and the situations. Even the time that you have with the player. Even the time you spend with the player as well. But, but it's good he scored, you know, against um, Madagascar in the last game. Um, he had a good game. He did not only score. But I think it's, it's been one of his best games I've seen. He, he was able to express himself. He touched the ball more, more than the number of times he, he, he has been deployed as a center forward. He was able to dribble, pass, run into spaces, run into channels, um, expect the ball. He's able to hold on and give the ball and lay a pass. And so for me, honestly, the, the performance against Madagascar was absolutely top-notch. And then he capped it with that goal in, uh -oh. the, in the 95th minute. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't continue in the in the Comoros game, but I think he's one of our best players. He's one of our best assets going into the Cup of Nations. Uh, we need to encourage him, you know. Um, again, Anila, you play in Europe. You spent all your time in Europe. Suddenly, you switch come to Africa. The weather is different. The pitches are not the same, and so these are even the fan reception well. is different. Even the fan reception, and sometimes there's one thing we seem to forget that center forwards are the players who touches the ball the least number of times in every game depending on where he plays if he's just a center forward and he runs into channels and space and he expects the ball and the ball doesn't come he becomes that's useless. about it because you, know, you are only really useful up top up top and 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 you cannot be the goalkeeper and right back and everything you only expect that they, they, they send come the to ball you for you are you score. going to go back and defend so no, when there's a counter you'll be found no, wanting no you chance can't do that. you know so, so these are some of the factors that have attributed to, to Iñaki's, you know, goal drought. But at least he has one goal for us. He has us, opened his account. And he has opened his account. All of us <laughs> were happy on the day. Very. And then he was, he was looking good. Um, he came to me and said, Kweku, go no Aba. Was he, was he, then he said, Bebe Beba, Bebe Beba. <laughs> we are sure. You know, so we are wish, sure. We wish him the best of we, luck. We and I, I pray things actually work out, especially for, for this afternoon. It can only get better from yeah. here. Now, Henry, before we go, let's just shift the conversation very briefly to Thomas Partey. Thomas Partey is a player that I think a lot of people have already been looking at Thomas Partey because of his prowess in the midfield. 
we didn't see a lot of injuries with Atletico, even though they were happening, but I don't think that the spotlight was there as much concerning the conversation around him. Coming into the Arsenal front, there were quite a bit of injuries here and there. We saw him gel with different players in the midfield. Even before Shaka left, we saw the kind of combination that they posed. But when we situate him in the Black Stars, do you think it's any different from what you see against Arsenal? Yes, um, I, have known, I have known Thomas for 15 years because I worked with him when he was um, at Tema Youth. Um, he's a player who loves to see the pitch um, because of his long balls, because of his vision. His height. And <laughs> he and can't miss height anything. And the ability to locate players in difficult you know, positions on mm -hmm. the field of play. So that is one of his attributes. Um, it, is, it is unfortunate that Thomas has had to deal with injuries at Arsenal. I mean, too many times. One too many times. Um, he's had over eight different injuries at Arsenal. Sometimes he undergoes the knife. Um, sometimes he stays out for a very long time. Um, I haven't spoken to him in recent times, but the conversations we've, we've had with the coach. The coach met him, I think, four days ago. Chris met him, I think, four days ago to speak to him, to find out if indeed he will be able to come to the, to the AFCON. We are also dealing with the, the medics of Arsenal to get the recovery schedule or itinerary uh, after which we will decide whether to include him in the team or to to or keep not. him out of the squad Definitely. so yes um on any day he's he's brilliant on any day he's an exceptional player um but it's unfortunate that he's had to deal with these kinds of injuries you spoke about what he does at arsenal and what he brings to the black stars he plays with different players um the, the the game pattern in England is completely it's different completely. From, from what happens, you know, um, in the Black Stars. Um, there have been occasions where he plays in the pivot um, as as number six, he plays with another number six, two defensive midfielders, and one needs to go at one point for the other one to stay. To fall back a little. You know, um, I think he had quite a good tournament in Qatar, with the exception of the Uruguay game. You know, and the Uruguay game, I don't know which, which player stood out, you know, in that game that we lost. It so it looks like history was just <laughs> stepping <laughs> stepping on us. Yeah, so 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 yes, Thomas on any day is a good player, but um, it is what it is. Uh, the injuries have not really allowed him to play as many games as possible. Exactly. We just need to keep stars. our fingers crossed here. Henry, thank you so much for joining us here on Warmer Plus. Mm -hmm. It is the final Saturday of the oh, yeah, year. Exactly. The last one. But Henry, before you go, do you want to say anything out there to your fans, to Black Stars fans, or maybe just to drop your, your happy holidays message for the new year just to the people watching Warmer Unfor Plus? Unfortunately, I haven't had, I haven't had enough rest. <laughs> Because man is working, yeah. but but Merry Christmas to to our viewers um, and a prosperous New Year to all of them. Um, I just want to say that our Black Stars um, is not shining the way we 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 wanted. Okay, but it is not all is not lost. Um, I I think that we have one week and a few days to prepare for the competition. The players are very much aware of what happened in, in Cameroon two years ago. They want to correct their wrongs. Um, uh, luckily, we have one friendly match to mm -hmm. play. Um, early next week, the coach will announce his squad. squad. Let's all rally around the flag, support, support the team, and push the team to, to the highest height. This is what we have. Um, it's not about any player. It's not about your dislike for a player that will or should make you, you know, mm -hmm. dislike the team. We are going to the AFCON. We are very positive. Let's come together and push And it. support. Thank you so much. The message here is clear. Let's come together as Ghanaians and support the Black Stars. This has been me, Aniela Alote, right here on Warm Up Plus. This is how we wrap up 2023. Join us in the new year next Saturday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Have a very, very, very lovely end of your year.